Tesla has rolled out full self-driving in Australia and New Zealand. There's a bunch of videos about it. I've, I've driven a Tesla in the United States using full self-driving, and I can tell you now, I've watched pretty much every video of Australians using full self-driving, and full self-driving in Australia is not the same as it is in the United States. It's definitely not. I promise you, it's quite different and this is probably because of what the government has made Tesla do. Now, is it actually good though? Does it work? Does Tesla's for self-driving work in Australia? Yes, it works, but there's one big problem with it. And it's not Tesla's fault. Hello, my friends. Welcome to the channel. I'm Sam Evans. You're watching The Electric Viking. YouTube's new algorithm means that you're often not getting all of our videos in your feed. There's 7,500. I'm pretty sure you're probably not seeing a lot of them. In the description, there is a link to our newsletter. Click on that and you can get an update every day of all the latest news in the electric car industry. It's exciting to see full self-driving has been approved for use in Australia. A bunch of people have tested it already and it's good. Actually, it's very good, but there's one big problem with it. The big problem is that um, it's too slow. It works fine, drives around roundabouts. Some media person personalities have tested it and said, oh, it's breaking the law. It should have indicated left here. They're wrong. They're actually wrong. Uh, you should only indicate left if it actually makes sense to do so. So on something like a big roundabout. In other words, when you enter a roundabout, right, and you're going to turn and you, get, you exit the roundabout, if you're actually pretty much going straight on that roundabout and it's a small roundabout, you don't indicate left. You're just going to confuse people. So usually people don't indicate left. Even though I live in New South Wales, most people don't indicate left because it doesn't make sense to do so. If you're on a big roundabout, one like really big one, yeah, then you'll indicate left. So Teslas are not making mistakes, as far as I can see. Actually, pretty much no mistakes in Australia. They're actually really good. It's working really well. <laughs> but... They are going just too slow. And I'm talking about well under the speed limit. And this is going to be quite annoying for you if you want a Tesla. Now, why are they going so slow? Do they do this in the United States? No, they don't actually. In fact, Teslas in the US are quite aggressive if you want them to be. Poor self-driving in the US has been improved enormously to the point where it can drive pretty much like a human being. From my experience personally using it, I think that um, it drives similarly to what I do. In fact, probably a bit better than what I do, I'd say. It's incredibly good. It's as aggressive as you, as you want, as you need it to be. It goes the speed limit. Um, it doesn't, you know, it doesn't give a huge gap behind cars, so you're just going to be overtaken endlessly. But in Australia, it, it's too slow. It goes under the speed limit, not always, but quite often, quite a bit. And this, I believe, is just because of government regulations. Government regulations in Australia, I believe, have forced Tesla to make it very, very conservative. So that's the, the main issue. But other than that, I, I think this might change. I think it's, it's when we get more data and when the government gets more data showing, hey, it's really safe and it works, I think the government will probably allow Tesla to, or maybe Tesla themselves will make the decision to get it to go a little quicker and um, not cause people to be behind and get a bit annoyed because you're going too slow. Tesla's original prediction was that its full self-driving tech would be rolling around on right-hand side of roads in the worlds such as the United Kingdom, uh, Thailand, Australia, New Zealand, Japan, etc. They said that this would happen in 2022. Now, obviously, it's taken three years longer, but um, hey, it has happened, and it is actually very impressive. It's not actually clear how much Tesla customers will be charged for the full self-driving feature at this point in time. They may change it, the price now, because of the fact that it's um, been legalized by Australia and New Zealand's governments, uh, but you can't actually use it yet. All of this is all marketing stuff coming from the media, but you can't actually use it yet. Tesla said they are closer than ever to actually basically getting people to be able to use it in Australia. So at this point in time, this is all excitement, but technically, technically not quite live yet. Now, what we do know is customers are offered the option of $10,000 Australian dollars, so about $6,500 US dollars when they order. Lots of people have it, and you can order it after you've got the car. Model 3 and Model Y vehicles fitted with Tesla's Hardware 4, also known as A14 or Hardware 4 computer, 
will be the first to get full self-driving switched on. Earlier models with hardware three, apparently Tesla says will be full self-driving compatible. I don't think they will be. I think that Tesla will have to change, um, basically have to do something. I don't know what they're going to do. Give people refunds or something. Because I don't think hardware three is capable of doing it. But we'll see. And Tesla are saying themselves that those vehicles will need hardware upgrades before the software can be loaded. But does that mean cameras? Does that mean the chip as well? No, I don't actually fully know. Here's what um, one of the biggest car websites in Australia, Car Sales, said. They said numerous journalists were given the opportunity to test drive Teslas using full self-driving. A two-hour tour of Brisbane and surrounding areas alone with a Tesla Model 3. They said it's staggering how well the system actually worked. It's amazingly simple in its operation. Choose your destination, press and hold the blue start full self-driving button on the touchscreen, and away it goes. It drives from where you are to your destination. The system doesn't need a navigation destination though to operate and will simply maintain its lane and the most straight ahead direction if you haven't put in a destination. So if you don't put in a destination and tell it where, it's, where you're going, it'll just keep on driving straight ahead <laughs> for as long until the battery runs out, I'm assuming. Using only an array of cameras, no radar and no LiDAR, and also GPS, Tesla, its full self-driving, is capable of completing a journey typical of what any person would generally encounter here in Australia. All of the media have confirmed that this is actually accurate. Not only does it navigate busy junctions and roundabouts all without driver intervention, it can identify more spontaneous challenges. These include recent roadworks requiring lane changes, other moving vehicles, and pedestrians in car parks. It's um, capable of handling pretty much every use case, every little edge case you can throw at it. Now, I'm sure there's gonna be some extreme examples where it might get confused, and uh, just stop, that could happen. But at this point, we haven't seen that yet. Impressively, when the navigation route is complete, the Tesla will est also establish the available parking spaces in the vicinity, select one, and then park the car for you. This is another example of how the tech is capable of functioning in real time and processing the huge amount of information actually available to it. One of the secrets to this versatility and a, and a one of the secrets to this versatility and adaption on the fly is it uses GPS and other road condition information in addition to the visual information from the cameras. So it's actually thinking further down the road than a human driver is actually, actually capable of doing. Plus imagine, you know, human drivers don't have cameras in the back of their heads. They think they do, but we don't. And we don't have cameras here either, here. You know, we just have really this amount of vision at the front. Most impressive though, is how the human system feels in its behavior, said carsales.com, and reaction to other road users. To a degree, an autonomous vehicle needs a certain level of aggression, or perhaps assertiveness, to make decisions in situations where human drivers are displaying the same traits. That's exactly what full self-driving is capable of. It doesn't wait for infinite gaps in traffic to emerge from junctions, nor does it fail to change lanes or leave a freeway when other motorists are being bullies. It simply rolls up its sleeves and does the job. Perhaps we're too trusting, says car sales, or perhaps the Tesla full self-driving system is more trustworthy than we'd anticipated. But it's surprising how quickly we relaxed and put our trust in the vehicle to take control. What's not so good? Well, here's what Carl Sell said. If you took time to read the Society of Automotive Engineers definition of the five levels of driving automation, you would see there is a distinct overlap between Tesla, between what Tesla says its system, level two, and the next tier above it, level three. The key difference is that level two is regarded as an advanced form of driver assistance, while level three is considered the first stage of autonomous driving and therefore illegal in Australia according to about 700 different laws. As such, the full self-driving system comes with the bracketed S denoting supervised. That means the human driver is required to be monitoring and capable of taking over driving duties instantly. On more than a couple of occasions, this was necessary, said car sales. Now, the videos that I've watched, it wasn't necessary. Car sales said they had a few times when they felt they did have to take over. 
The technology doesn't seem capable, says car sales, of spotting potholes and avoiding them with two nasty ones, the kind you definitely steer around, crash through. It can identify 3D objects sitting above the road surface, but apparently not indentations below it. Now, I strongly disagree with car sales here. Guys, I drove uh, today from Crescent Head in New South Wales, three hours back to Newcastle. And there was hundreds of potholes. There is no human driver on the planet that could have avoided those potholes. If you think you could have, you are utterly delusional because it's impossible. Right now in Australia, in particularly in Queensland and New South Wales, we've had one of the rainiest years on, in history and there is potholes literally everywhere, right? If human drivers are really capable of avoiding all these potholes as car sales claims that they are, then I, I've never met one. They must be the most skilled, incredibly talented drivers that I've ever seen in history. And I've never seen someone capable of avoiding all the potholes that we have on the roads today. I don't even know if that's always a good idea because sometimes it means you've got to swerve to the other side of the road. Anyway, car sales goes on to say, on three occasions, the vehicle seemed to forget or wasn't able to establish the speed limit and defaulted to a lower speed. Now, I agree with this. In the videos I've seen, um, Teslas have been driving too slow. I think anyway. On the most concerning occasion, this happened as we were joining the freeway, says car sales, while other nearby vehicles were accelerating to 100 kilometers an hour, the Tesla slowed to 30 kilometers an hour and pulled partially onto the shoulder. Understandably, other motorists beeped and had to avoid the Tesla at walking pace, and it was critical to override the system by accelerating and grabbing the steering wheel. I didn't see this happen on the videos that I saw, but car sales says it did, so I believe them. Another incident was perhaps more worrying and happened on approach to a small traffic island in a quiet housing estate. Instead of bearing left and obeying the direction arrow sign, the vehicle paused, erratically shook the steering wheel a few degrees in each direction before driving the wrong way around the island. Unlike the problem on the freeway, there was no evasive or corrective action that could be performed by the driver as the car had already committed to the incorrect lane and the traffic island prevented returning to the other side. Thankfully, there was no traffic traveling in the opposite direction and perhaps the presence of other vehicles would have allowed the full self driving to better understand the situation and avoid the error. Anyway, this incident and a few others suggest the system is a fair way from full autonomy at this stage and the human driver is definitely not redundant yet in Australia. Finally, there's, there is a cabin monitoring camera that allows the system to establish if the driver is paying full attention and issues a warning if it's not, if they're not. But compared to other similar systems in mainstream manufacturer models, it's somewhat lenient and permissive of more distraction than it perhaps should be. Now, I should point out that while this is true in my experience using Tesla's full self-driving, I agree that it's more lenient, but I can tell you the opposite is extremely stressful and most cars now they have their cameras in the, in the car that monitor you. And my goodness, I want to smash them. I really do. They are infuriating. They tell you off for yawning constantly. Most cars do this now. Um, it's kind of rude the way that they are so invasive. I'd prefer it to be less invasive. Anyway, car sales says this, it appears the difference between level two and level three comes down to how strict the driver monitoring virtual dead man switch functions. In Tesla's case, it feels more like level three in practice. So should you buy for self-driving and a Tesla? Car sales says Tesla has enough of those proponents already Car sales says the full self-driving system is extraordinary, massively impressive, and its presence on Australian roads is a motoring milestone, regardless of how you feel about the brand and autonomy generally. However, all of the above comes with a warning. While Tesla is clear that its revolutionary system is an advanced driver assistance system and must be supervised at all times, we're concerned customers may be tempted to treat it as an autonomous driver, just as many have in existing left-hand drive markets. To an extent, we can't blame them as features labeled as self-driving and autopilot are arguably misleading in their very wording and contradictory to the advice disclaimer Tesla offers. If they do, the incidents that have occurred in overseas markets will be replicated in Australia and New Zealand with the accompanying controversy and tragedy. If used correctly though, 
Full self-driving is an exciting glimpse into a future where all vehicles are safer and more convenient in exactly the same way Tesla pioneered the electrification cause and accelerated the evolution of EVs. To that, we doff our hats. I think Tesla's full self-driving in Australia will pretty quickly improve. Uh, my experience of driving using full self-driving in the US was it had no problems uh, driving onto highways. It never slowed down. I never had that happen to me. It didn't go on the wrong side of the road ever, as it has in this situation in Australia. I think maybe a couple of months and Tesla will fix these bugs and it will be working as well as it is in the United States. Well, I hope it will be because in the US, it's incredibly good. I mean, spectacularly good. It's much better than what it is in Australia at this point in time. But I can see this improving very quickly. What are your thoughts? Thanks for watching.